me take you through some of this wiring. We're going to do a little bit of a shortcut right here. So we already got the hole cut through the firewall. And we did this in a very selective manner because of the intake manifold that we're running. This way the wiring kind of comes right underneath the intake manifold and you don't see it back behind the motor at all. And it's kind of hidden back there. So I think uh, that's an inch and a half hole and I have a grommet actually that... I fed the grommet over all of these wires and everything. Brought the grommet back so it's inside of the firewall right now. So once I get these out here, I can push that grommet through there and then I'll glue that grommet in and seal that off with some silicone. So if you ever get a oil leak or a uh, um, any kind of valve cover leak or anything like that where it drips down on the exhaust it's not pulling those fumes up into the car and everything that way so that'll be all sealed off but you can put the hole through the firewall kind of you have to kind of route it where you want your ECU to be where you want your fuse box and everything to be so you gotta gotta figure plan it out first where that hole is gonna go but it just worked out Awesome, right there. There was actually an inch and three quarter hole right here where the original HVAC wiring came out of. But that was going to be seen and you'd be able to see that plain as day. So I decided to cover that one up. This is our bead rolled firewall filler panel that we made. And uh, we are going to be selling these too. So if anybody looking for an A-body cutlass or, uh, or GM uh, A-body to fill the firewall... We're going to be putting these up for sale for about 200 bucks and uh, non-painted or powder coated, but uh, be done. And you can just put that on there to cover up your ugly firewall. So going, moving right along. When I said about the wiring harness is not so scary, it's really, really easy to lay this stuff out and, uh, and to the point where... It just makes sense. So this is our transmission plug, and this one uh, is going to get a uh, uh, the 4L60, so it only has one speed sensor wiring. So our transmission plug is all by itself and everything. So that we can fish down along where our transmission is gonna get hooked up to and everything. So we'll kind of feed that down, and I'm, and of course, that's not going to go down in there now. All right. So we can kind of get that pushed down in place. The biggest thing that you're going to need to worry about, and you, it is such a common thing with these motors for people to do. And this harness is kind of excluded from that, honestly. But, uh, but is the ground wire. So from the factory... It has a ground wire hooked up to the back of the cylinder head right here. And then it also has another one on the passenger side. Also, a lot of people hook up one ground and the other one just gets dropped down behind the motor. And they can't figure out why their motor doesn't run and everything. And especially once you put the intake manifold onto it. And I highly recommend doing your wiring like right now like this without the intake manifold on it. Because if you're running a truck intake or a Holly High Ram, or in this case, or fabricated High Ram intake manifold, and the motor is really pushed back towards the firewall, it's really hard to get back there to do anything. And <clears throat> one of the things that you're gonna also realize that this is for, so this is a Gen 3 motor right here. This is a cam position sensor which I've already plugged in and uh, that's your cam position sensor that's on a gen 3 a gen 4 the cam position sensor is going to be in the front of the motor so you're going to want to plug that in right away you got your two knock sensors we got those plugged in also and uh, and then our oil pressure that is is kind of weird actually the oil pressure is not read by your ECU. Your ECU does not see oil pressure, period. And that is all separate completely. So your gauge, whatever you're using for a gauge, whether it be the factory gauge cluster or you're running a Dakota Digital, like in this case, 
So in this case, we have our Dakota Digital sending unit that is in the back of this. So before the intake manifold goes on now, that gauge is going to be hooked up and we'll, we'll route the wires in this factory harness uh, for the motor. And then once we get it inside the car, we'll skip off and go to our gauges with it instead. But we'll use the same hole so we don't have to make another hole opening through it. But <clears throat> bank one, bank two, always the driver's side is bank one. Bank two is the passenger side. Your harness is going to be marked bank one or bank two on it. And, uh, and if it's not, or you're questioning it whatsoever, this is going to be your context clues right here. So if, like with this one, this is bank one right here, and, uh, and I know that instantly without even reading a label that this is bank one because this has our throttle position sensor. This has our alternator wire right here. I could recognize that right off the bat. Our throttle position, our map sensor, and everything are going to be right on this side. So this is got uh, going to be running a cable-driven uh, throttle body, so it doesn't have a drive-by wire. So it has an IAC valve, it has a throttle position sensor, and then it also has a water temperature sensor. And that water temperature sensor is going to go behind the head right here, and it's going to hook up onto this other side of the uh, spark of number one spark plug wire and it plugs in right here the alternator plugs in right here your throttle position sensor and your iac valve are right here your coil pack wiring boom look at that remember i told you it kind of lays right in place look at this you can't plug these in wrong this is just going to be Injector 1, Injector 3, Injector 5, Injector 7. Bing, bang, boom. Walla walla, bing, bang. So now we go over to bank 2. Same thing. You look at that. Our coil harness just is almost right into place. You know, it, it, you can't plug the stuff in wrong here. And this is for our mass airflow sensor right yeah, this is for our mass airflow sensor right here. And then we have another one set up for our trinary switch for our AC. So that's going to go off to the side. We're going to probably, we're going to have to lengthen that because our trinary switch is actually right underneath my butt right now. And that's where that's going to be. So we're going to actually lengthen that. But there is another thing that I just noticed also when doing this there is two wires that we are missing out here that i'd like to mount our fan relays underneath the hood here and uh and have the fan relays out here so the fan relay wires must be inside of the car right now so we're going to probably move those out here put a relay out here um but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way you can run your relays underneath the dash if you want to so it'll trigger on fan one, fan two. Fan one will come on in the, this is all in your computer programming though. You can turn the fans on and off at whatever temperatures that are programmed that you want to be programmed that way also. And then the trinary switch like we were talking about for the air conditioning, as soon as the air conditioning is turned on on the vintage air, it will turn on both cooling fans automatically right away. So otherwise, one of them will work uh, when the fan one is triggered on. If the temperature keeps climbing, then the ECU will trigger on fan two. And that's all done by the one wire over here that I told you with the uh, uh, that goes into the temperature sending unit that's in the head itself. So that's a factory sending unit factory wiring going to the ECU and everything that way and that tells the fans when to trip on and off but that's basically it in a nutshell and I skipped one wire that or two actually so one no here it is right here is gonna uh, nope 
we're a different one. Oh, I think I tucked it underneath there to get it out of the way. But there is a crank position sensor that sits above the starter. So let me just go through that real quick with you. Crank position sensor down by the starter. Cam position sensor up top. Knock sensors on a Gen 3 motor are up top. Gen 4 motor, they're underneath the motor. A lot of harnesses and a lot of people eliminate that completely. So you don't have to run knock sensors. You can tune them out of the ECU so it doesn't use them. But in my book, why would you not use them if you have them and everything? Because it's another fail safe that the engine takes timing out when it senses knocks. It does, obviously, if you have faulty knock sensors and stuff, it can screw up the ECU. And that's why a lot of people uh, decide to eliminate them altogether. So if you want to put on a nice polished cover that doesn't have these knock sensors in it, you don't want the knock sensors on it. BP Automotive will make you a harness without the knock sensor harness even in there. But if you decide you just don't want to do that, you could have the harness made also and you could just unplug the knock sensors. It has to be tuned out of the ECU or it'll set off fault codes if it's not plugged in though. So, so keep that in mind. You can run without the knock sensors. But there we go. Crank position sensor, cam position sensor, oil pressure sending unit, knock sensors. You got your bank two, which is passenger side, bank one, driver side. You got your coil pack wiring, injector number eight, six, four, and two right here. So they all go into one spot. Uh, mass airflow. You don't have to run a mass airflow sensor also. You can have it tuned in a speed density setup, but you'll still have to use two of these wires coming off of the mass airflow sensor, and they will have to be um, piped in, and I just so happen to have one laying right here, so that's handy. Um, <clears throat> so this is an inlet air temperature sensor. So the motor has to run an inlet air temperature sensor. And, uh, and there's another one that I forgot to say so is the uh, manifold pressure sensor. So you need a MAP sensor. You need a, uh, a inlet air temperature sensor or a uh, mass airflow sensor. And that completes everything on the motor. So you got your alternator wire, your water temperature wire, your coil packs, your injectors, your fuel, your uh, oil pressure sender, your knock sensors, your cam sensor, your crank sensor. That's all you have to hook up. None of them can go in wrong. You can't plug the mass airflow sensor into the throttle body. You can't plug. The only thing that you can do is you can mix up, and a lot of people do this, bank one and bank two, and you get those mixed up. Also, a lot of people only hook up one bank of grounds. This harness is actually bundled together, so it only has one ground spot, but most of them have two, so keep that in mind. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is when you poke that harness through there, is hook your grounds up right away. Don't forget to hook them up. Make sure, one, you have a clean, if your block is painted and everything, and you hook that up on there and tighten them up, you could possibly have a really bad ground, and you're going to really have a bad time trying to get your motor running when you don't have that ground on there. It will mess with your brain to the point where you will hate LS motors, and you'll put a dang carburetor on it because of your ground wire wasn't hooked up. And when you hook those up, I always use star washers like this so a star washer digs in so if your heads are painted or if you have corrosion onto the back always always i use star washers that puts that on there you put that in there you tighten it up it bites into the head and then also you're going to want a good ground going from your motor to chassis as well so grounds are super 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 important on anything injected it will just mess with your brain beyond belief if you don't have a ground or if you have a bad ground connection or 
Another thing that I've seen quite a few times now, and I've had this problem a couple of times, especially when you're putting an older harness in, is when you hook up that ground, and especially if your intake manifold and stuff is on, and you're doing that blind, you put that in there, you get your bolt in there, and you start tightening it up, and when you tighten it up, it breaks the connector right here where the wires just pull out just ever so slightly and you will have an intermittent ground problem that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and you'll jump off a bridge because of that so that's why i said before you put your intake this is exactly how i would go about doing it every time you get your wires through the firewall here before you put the intake manifold on, you hook your grounds up, you get your oil pressure sending unit hooked up, and that's how I would go about doing this. That's the just of the motor bay portion of, of getting all this hooked up. We're going to actually take you through another one of getting the ECU mounted and everything hooked up into the car, but that's going to be in another video, so don't forget to stay tuned for that one. We'll get that one all ready for you. And hopefully you guys are all learning something and you're going to make this LS swap thing happen. It's worth it, people. Don't forget to like this video. Click like. Throw me a comment. Let me know what you think. Ring the bell for those notifications when I get a new video. We got lots more coming up, guys. A lot of cool stuff coming up. I hope you guys are enjoying the ride.